God bless you tonight. Welcome to New Grace Tabernacle Bible Study. God bless you, Sister Vivica. Sister Ebony, bless you. Come on in, share it. Brother Tim, bless you. Levette, bless you. Champion, bless you. Listen, I need you to share it. Minister Fisher, bless you. Come on, we're excited about Bible study tonight. God bless you, Sister Salona Williams. God bless you, Mother Brown. God bless you, Jake Langley. Bless you, Sister Shalanda. Anybody know you got victory? God bless you, precious Connor. Sister Bernice. It's good to see the saints tonight. Bless you, Sister Fisher. Bless you, Evangelist. Prophetess Geneva Davis. Sister Taniqua. Listen, I want y'all to share it tonight. It's going to be powerful tonight. Sister Barbara. Come on, you got to claim victory in your life. We get ready to get into the word of God. But I want you to claim victory tonight. You can add, you got the victory. Somebody claiming that tonight. Yes, God. If you got it. You got the claim victory.
Father God, we thank you tonight for the victory that is already won. We pray right now that you join us in this Bible study, Lord. We can't have Bible study without you. So I pray right now, God, that you use your manservant. I can't preach nor teach without you. I pray that you come into every household, through every phone, through every tablet, through every laptop, through every TV screen, and let your power and anointing be felt in every household. We bind up the enemy. We bind up anything that's not like you, Father God. We bind up any demonic spirit that tries to come through this airways. And God, we give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We got the victory, y'all. We got the victory. Listen, I have a very unique Bible study tonight, and I want you to share this. Some of y'all... Um, are always sharing the Bible study, and I appreciate you. I thank God for you. Listen, we want to let the folks know that every Tuesday night there is a word from the Lord, and um, I kind of, uh, I kind of struggled with this and putting this Bible study together because I don't want to discourage the saints. I want to encourage the people of God and everything that we do, and I believe God and. I believe that after this Bible study, we're going to have a better understanding of our go throughs. We all got to go through. We I'm going to say it again. We all have to go through and you're going to have a better understanding of your go throughs. Amen. So very quick. And we're going to keep praying. Again, we're praying for the sister McLean and uh, the family of Vivica McLean. At the, for the passing of their nephew so many people to pray for i i don't want to get the name and names out but i didn't start it we're praying for sister lisa uh sister lisa from our church uh we're praying that god strengthens her body we're praying for minister morgan we're praying for deacon ned deacon ned i see him on tonight we got good news he's coming along amen and we're praying for uh the wick barry wiggins and his family we're praying for McCray and his family. And if anybody else I forgot, we're praying for them too. Amen. But listen, this Bible study tonight, I, I, I tried to title it as best I could because some of us are confusing our attacks or our go-throughs with reaping. And I, I asked the question, Am I under attack or am I reaping? I'm going to ask that question again. Am I under attack or am I reaping? Because the Bible says clearly, clearly that we will reap what we sow. And, and I struggled with that because I know some, some of us have done some things, and, and that's why you got to be careful how you treat people, how you do people, careful of your actions, because if God's word is the truth, then you're going to reap what you sow. If his word is not a lie, and God's word is not a lie. See, reaping and sowing is not just reaping the good, but you also going to reap the bad. But thank God there's grace. <laughs> and we're going to talk about it. Thank God there's grace for that. Some folks think they're under such attack, but don't forget not too many years ago, some of the things you did that you may be reaping now. And this is where I am in my life. If I've done anything I'd rather reap it than have my children reap it. Because if, if you don't reap it, it's going to linger. Linger. and Because some things you got to be careful. I remember my mom said uh, I, we, would, we would be making fun of folks and how their babies look. My mother said, don't you laugh because you ain't had kids yet. See, we got to be careful that we don't put things in the atmosphere and then we end up reaping it and then saying we're under attack. No, it's not so much of an attack. Now, there are some attacks 
from the enemy. There are some attacks, but it's not so much under attack. Some things you may be reaping. And I, I, I want to I wanna get, and, and, and separately, anybody that has done you wrong, it is not you to repay them. It is not you to get them back. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So they'll reap what they did to you. But you ever seen somebody do you wrong and you see them struggling and, and, and going through hell? It's not for you to point at them and say, see, God going to get, no, you got to start praying for them. That's why the Bible says, pray for them that despitefully use you. Because when they do you wrong, they going to reap that. And you got to pray for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yes, God. I want to go to Galatians chapter 6. And I, you, you know, <laughs> this, this is going, this is going to get tough tonight because sometimes we think, oh, I got away with that. No, 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 no. God, th there is a reaping to this thing. That's why we always pray for the mercy of God. We always, and it's not just reaping, oh, I sowed a seed, so I'm going to reap. That's great, and that's good, but there's some other stuff you've done. There's some other stuff we've done, and we see, oh, God, oh, it's coming back, and you, you, got, you got to reap it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever good God Almighty, a man sows, that shall he also reap. This is the word of God. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap destruction or corruption. But he that sows to the spirit shall reap of the spirit life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall weep we shall reap if we faint not. We shall reap. And, and a lot of times we just equivalate that to the positive. But I'm trying to get you to understand tonight your go through. God, why am I going through like this? God, why am I suffering like this? God, why am I dealing with this? Track back. Yes, he, God forgives you. Yes, God covers your sins, but the word of God says you will reap what you sown. Woo! Let me give you a prime example. You can do something wrong. You can break the law and do something wrong and you in the courthouse and all this stuff, God will forgive you. He'll forgive you of your transgressions. But that does not mean you don't have to reap what you've sown. So you still may have to go to jail for what you did. Now God can have mercy and God's grace is sufficient. I'm going to show you in the word of God. But you got to reap what you've sown. And you get a better understanding of that once you come to the knowledge of Christ and, and, and once you come into the reading of the word, there are some things you just got to reap. Now, on the flip side, when you're doing good and you say, well, I'm doing good, I'm doing, I'm doing good, I'm doing good now. You're doing good now. But what about then? What about then? What? Well, well, that was years ago. Well, the Bible says you'll reap if you faint not. So we got to get an understanding of our go through. There are consequences to sin. There is redemption from sin. There is forgiveness from sin. But there are also consequences of sin. And a lot of times, you know, don't let nobody fool you when you, you know, when you get when you get saved and you get sanctified and all this stuff, yes, you're saved and sanctified, but that does not mean you don't still have to reap some things that you've done. I struggled with this because I thought, you know, once I got saved, I got a clean slate. Once I got saved, everything I've done, I don't have to answer for. But the word of God 
kind of conflicted me with this today with, by saying you're going to reap what you sow. It says whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. So there are some attacks that are straight from the enemy because of the because uh, of testing. God may test you and he allow the devil to come in and do what he needs to do, but he won't, but his grace is still sufficient. There are some attacks that we cause on our own, and then there's the reaping. Everything ain't an attack. Some things is reaping. And and the real saints would say, Well, you know, I ain't been perfect all my life. I thank God for grace. I thank God for mercy. So let me show you something. Second Corinthians, I think that's where I want to go. Hallelujah. Y'all stay with me. So that's on, you know, when we're dealing with the reaping and sowing, don't just think that it's the positive stuff that you've sown. So some of us are are now on the right track. And I promise you, everything that you sow, now we're talking about sowing and reaping. Everything that you sow, once you see, you gotta get your mind on doing good things to pe for people. Get your mind on doing good things for people. This is not the time, especially after you done came to the knowledge of Christ, just to be treating people any kind of way, just to be talking to folks any kind of way. No, because you, you got to be careful hurting folks feelings and and causing people to not not want to come back to church and and discouraging people. All the discouragement that you lay on somebody that you got to reap that. God, you're going to be responsible for that. And like I said, I'd rather reap it than let it get passed on to my children. All of, the, all of this discouragement, all the nasty ways you talk to people, all the evil things you've done to people, all of the mean things you've done even in your family. Don't think you ain't got to reap that stuff. Some folks, and we, oh, that ain't my fault. That ain't my, some folks ain't coming to church because of you. Some folks won't come to the Thanksgiving dinner because of you. Because and don't don't I, we ain't been we ain't been all always right. And you got the answer for that stuff. I know some some folks gonna jump off this line. No, I ain't tuned in for this. I ain't, let me give you Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap sparingly and he which sows bountifully shall reap bountifully now this is talking about in the get in the giving way or in the loving way now watch this i think i might know the only few people that won't show love but expect love Woo! You can't reap love if you ain't showing love. You can't reap love if you're not. See, the Bible says whatsoever you shall sow, that shall you reap. And a lot of people want to reap. They want to reap from you what they haven't sold into you. They want to pull from you and uh, 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 withdraw from you what they have never sown into you. And look, look, you can sow it over there and reap it over there. That's why as people of God, listen to me real good. Grace and all of my visitors, listen to me. Treat people nice. Treat people with love, whether you know them or not, because they may not sow back into you but God got another sowing they got God got another reaping station somewhere across town and you ain't gonna know how in the world this got into your hands you ain't gonna but you just gotta remember wait a minute I've been sowing love and the Bible says if you sow sparingly you reap sparingly that's why some of us can only get love up to this much cause you ain't been sowing it but if you so bountifully, you, and, and I, I'm learning to sow into people and not expecting to reap from them. 
You can sow into somebody that ain't got nothing and reap from somebody that has everything. Is a concept to this whole reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping. And when we're talking about seed, now we're talking about seed. He gives seed to the sower. He, the Bible doesn't say he gives seed to the reaper. He gives seed to the sower. So when you are sowing, it automatically makes you a reaper. And if you sow bountifully, some of us have been, good God Almighty, some of us have been sowing and sowing and sowing. Listen, if you sow bountifully, the word of God cannot lie. So you'll reap bountifully. And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you faint not. That means as long as you are alive, this reaping and sowing system is going to work. As long as you're alive, reaping and sowing will work for you. As long as there's breath in your body, faint not. As long as there's breath in your body, reaping and sowing will work for you. But what are you, what are you reaping? What are you expecting to reap? Well, God, let me just reap the stuff after I turn 30. I don't want to reap all that mess I, I did before 30. Listen, listen, some of that stuff you did before you got saved and stuff, you're going to have to reap it. But the good news is once you come to the knowledge of reaping and sowing, you know how to sow. You know how to sow with your words. You know how to sow. So now you can begin to reap on a better side than reaping on the negative side. Woo! I want to help somebody tonight so bad. I want to help somebody because don't don't listen. I, 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 want, I want you to catch this and I'm, I got to move from here. You will not always reap where you sow. Somebody going to take that and run with it. You will not always reap where you sow. But keep sowing. Got to keep sowing. Keep sowing. Let me go to Proverbs. The 22nd chapter of Proverbs, verse 8. I'm going to read the amplified version of that. Proverbs 22 and 8. Bless you, Mama Connie. Bless you, Sister Champion. Uh, uh, the, the 22nd chapter of Proverbs, verse 8. He who sows injustice will reap a harvest of trouble and the rod of his wrath with which he oppresses others will fail. That's why, listen to me, church folk, saints, people of God. Be careful of sowing seeds of discord. The Bible says mark them that sow seeds of discord. Be careful of sowing seeds of negativity. Be careful of sowing seeds of injustice, negative words. My grandmama used to say this, and, and, I, and it sticks with me hard to this day. If you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Because once it come out of your mouth, you got to reap what comes out of your mouth. We got to understand the power that is in our tongue. We think we just going to sow, you, you know, we just, here, 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 the, here, the, here the, I sold this. No, you can sow more than with, with dollars and $20 bills and, 30, and $50 bills. You can sow with your mouth. <laughs> you can sow by opening your mouth. And you got to be careful now that you're coming into the knowledge of this because sooner or later you're going to need somebody to encourage you but you can't reap encouragement if you haven't sown encouragement you can't reap encouragement if everything coming out of your mouth is discouraging people want to be mean and evil and nasty to folk and you expect them to reap the good 
in the benefits of God. No, 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 sweetie. Listen, you got to know how to sow now with your mouth, with your finances, with your spirit. Sow some love, not show some love. Because some, you see, there, there, there's a lot of folk that can show that that's that peekaboo spirit. His love and his is not his love, his hate. No, no, no. Sow some love. That means plant it in somebody. And we got to treat, we got to treat people right. And 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 as saints, you you don't think I would have to say that as a pastor talking to the people of God. But some folks need to know how to treat people. The saints need to learn how to treat people. The saints need to learn how to love them. I'm not even going to say how to love on each other because that's what we're supposed to do. But the saints need to know how to love on everybody. Show love to somebody. It don't cost you nothing to tell somebody everything going to be all right. It don't cost you nothing to hug somebody and tell them they're going to be all right. It don't cost you nothing to encourage somebody. Ah. Uh. Yes, Lord. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. I love the word of God. Let me go to the book of Job. The book of Job. Some of y'all may call it Job, but I call it Job. This is coming from the book of Job. Because can you imagine how Job now, now you see this this Job's go through was a little bit different than a lot of people. Everybody ain't got a Job story. The Bible says, and we're going to Job chapter 4 verse 8 for my media team. Job chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says that Job was a perfect and upright man. In God's eyes. So Job's go through had nothing to do with anything that he had done. Job was an honorable man. And and, and, and Job was, I'm not going to say he was sinless, but I, I can't say that. But the Bible doesn't show any fault of Job. But Job's go through was a test. God was testing, the, testing Job. Job had to deal with God's conversation with Satan. God was trying to prove something to the devil. And Job knew nothing about it. God trying to prove. All Job knew is I'm just going to keep serving the Lord. So let me show you what Job says in the midst of his trial. Job chapter 4 verse 8. Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. That's what the word, that's what Job said. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness, they reap the exact same thing. You cannot get away with being wicked. Woo! Yes, God will forgive you, but you got to reap that thing. You cannot get away with sowing wickedness. Oh, this going to hurt somebody. Here, here we go. Even in the relationships that you had, if you did somebody wrong in your previous relationship, if you did somebody dirty in your previous relationship, don't think because you moved on to another relationship that you ain't got to reap what you did in the previous one. If that was the case, then God's word is a lie. Because he said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you did people dirty and on your and now all of a sudden you see some kind of problems in your relationship right now, go back and say, am I reaping this or am I under attack? Because whoever did you wrong in a relationship, they can move on to another relationship. They can move on to another person, but they think they're getting something better, but they're going to reap everything they've done to you. Woo! This is a tough pill to swallow tonight, y'all.
Oh, this is tough tonight. Oh, well, hallelujah. Well, look at this. Well, what is this? My, 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 my. Good God Almighty. Whoa. Haya Baba Hot. Yes, God. You. Whoo. I don't know what that is my wife done put in there. But Lord Jesus. Hey. Hey. All right. Whew. What was I talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the relationships. Be, be careful what you, you, you know. Well, I, I don't know why I can't get, get in the right relationship. Go back to them last ones, the relationship you had. Did, did you do somebody dirty? Did you, were you evil in your last thing? You got to reap that. But God is a forgiving God. He, the, he, he said he forgive me. I asked for forgiveness and the person forget. All that is good. All that is true. All that is well and good. But I'm going to show you something in this word. Listen to me. I'm about to show you something. Because the Bible says we got to reap what we have sown. Let me get this here. My wife is something else. Let me show you something here. Yes, Lord. I want to talk to talk about. I want to go to Acts chapter nine. Verse one and two. Yes, God, because I want to talk about Paul. But before his name was Paul, they called him Saul. And I want to show you something in the word of God. And a lot of times we kind of gloss over this thing. But I, I want to show you something. If we go to Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And we know whenever we teach or preach about Paul, we preach and teach about him as being one of the greatest preachers of the gospel. He led more people to Christ other than Jesus. You know, all that stuff. But look at chapter nine, verse one and two of Acts. And, and, and it says like this. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to Christ, whether they were men or women, he would take them in as prisoners to Jerusalem. This is Paul, formerly known as Saul. The Bible declared that he was a persecutor of the people of God. The Bible declared that he went around looking for Christians and locked them up. If you serving this Jesus, Saul was the one, now known as Paul, that was locking folks up. That was dr dr driving out the saints. A persecutor of the saints. But if we go to 2 Corinthians, yes, Lord. If we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, I want to show you something. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. Unless I should be exalted above measure there through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in the weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, this is Paul who had a thorn in his flesh and he went to God to remove the thorn. 
But for some reason, God said, I'm not removing this thorn. Is it possible that Paul had to deal with the thorn? No other, no other person had to deal with a thorn. Is it possible Paul had to deal with a thorn because he was reaping what he did as Saul? Oh, y'all don't want to talk back to me. Y'all don't want to say nothing back to me. You see, I, I, I know you're doing good now, but what about what you were doing when you were locking the saints up, when you were persecuting the people of God, when as your name was Saul, you was destroying, trying to bring down my kingdom? What about then? So now that you are a preacher, now that you're on the right track, I'm supposed to forget what you were supposed to reap from being Saul. Is it possible that he did not remove the thorn from Paul because Paul had to reap it? That's not an attack. If you read up on it, he was a persecutor of the people of God. So there are some things that you have to reap. But one thing that I love about the God that we serve, he said, I'm not going to remove it because you got to reap it. But guess what? My grace, woo, my grace is sufficient for you. So although you got to reap this horrible mess, although I love you, I can't take it away from you, but I'm going to give you grace. You're going you're gonna to be able to deal with it. My grace, and that's how some of us are reaping stuff, but the reason we ain't throwing in the towel because his grace is sufficient for everything that we've done. His grace will lead. His grace is pulling us through. I don't know where I would be today if I had to reap all of that mess without grace. Ooh. If I had to reap all the stuff I did prior to becoming a pastor, if I had to reap all the stuff I did since becoming a pastor and I got to reap it without grace, and, and, I, and, and I, I said to myself, I said, I don't know if the people going to receive this because we, we teach the people that, you know, your, your sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. We teach the people that once they come to Christ and God forgives them, they don't have to worry about what they've done anymore. But I don't think that's all the way right. If I'm reading the word of God right, it's telling me we're going to reap what we sow as we faint not whatsoever. It didn't say the good we sow. It said whatsoever we sow. So we got to get that foolishness out of our mind that everything we did, we don't have to answer for. God is not holding you responsible for it anymore. You've been forgiven, but you still got to reap. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. And that's why you ought not get so high up on yourself. You ought not get so high minded on yourself because if God just snatched grace away and you got to reap all of that stuff you've done, don't act like you've been saved all your life. Don't act like you've been living holy all your life. You've done some, you've done some things to some folks. You hurt some people. We've hurt some people. We said some things about some folks. We lied on some folks. Oh, come on here. We we we've done something. We and, and some of it was prior to the knowledge of Christ, prior to living holy. Yes, but we've done some things. We cut some corners. And the Bible says you reap. So that's why you got to stay humble because at, at you, you know, at any moment, God, what if God snatched grace away? What if he snatched his mercy away? We got to stay humble. We got to keep keep our minds stayed on the Lord, because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be here. Because the devil wants us to reap it raw. The devil wants us to reap it raw and just just try reaping. The devil wants us to reap it harsh. But God said, you're going to reap it, but I'm going to give you grace. 
can't nobody ever nobody can tell us what the thorn was for Paul. But in my imagination, it has to, it, it it could possibly be all of the mess that that man did before he got that experience on that road, Damascus Road. Amen. So so we got we got to look at that. We we got to look at our go through. Now on the positive side, when when you when you're reaping the good of the Lord, some of us we sow even when we don't have it to sow. That's some of us, not all of us. And and I want to talk to the to those that are experienced. I want I want you to get experienced in your sowing and in your reaping. I want to talk to those that are experiencing, you know, you, you, you're not seeing it yet. Listen to me. Keep sowing good. Keep sowing the good. Keep, keep doing right by God. I'm going to show you something. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Because we, we think that, and a lot of times it's normal because we're human beings. We compare ourselves to people. It, 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 it happens. We say how they bless, how they bless. Not every blessing is from the Lord. Not every blessing is from God. Some things look like a blessing. But let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22 for the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow with it. Anything, that's Proverbs 10 and 22, anything that God blesses you with, you won't ever be sorry you got it. Because if somebody get up and say God blessed you with such and such and then two weeks later I wish God didn't give me that, that means it didn't come from God. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and don't add no sorrow to it. When God blesses you, you're going to know it. And I, I got a feeling that with this reaping and sowing, some of us are getting ready to get a God blessing, not no false blessing, not something that looks like a blessing, not a trick from the devil that we think is a blessing, but a real God blessing because it's going to make you rich and add no sorrow. I'm telling you right now, you understanding this sowing and reaping? Listen to me. I feel right now there's 30 people on here right now. God is getting ready to change some statuses in your life that things that were expensive won't be expensive no more. Things, price tags that you used to look at and you said, oh my God, how, how, how? They, you see, it's only expensive according to what you have. It's only expensive according to what's in your bank account. So when you don't have, uh, 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 when the blessings of the Lord make it rich, add no sorrow to it, that means you are living in overflow. God is getting ready to change some statuses. Some things that were expensive aren't expensive no more. Let me tell you, I, I, I'm going to show you because there was a time when, and y'all can laugh at me all you want. There was a time that I wouldn't go, I would go to McDonald's and I see the prices, you know, you got to pay almost nine, ten dollars for a whole meal. So I was getting off the dollar menu. I would get a sweet tea, a double cheeseburger, and a small fry, and a four piece nugget. And that only cost me five dollars. But now, you know, sometimes when God has, has blessed me, it ain't, I'm like, I look at that. Ja, my son John, ja, he liked the quarter pounder meal with the bacon and all that stuff. I said, he said, but it's eleven dollars, Dad. I said, I don't care. What's eleven dollars? Eleven dollars when you ain't got eleven dollars is expensive, but eleven dollars when you caking is pennies. That's my story. God is getting ready to shift some things because you're understanding reaping and sowing. God is getting ready to un to shift some things in your life that what was expensive for you now is cake. Woo. Lord, I hear you tonight. God, I feel you tonight. Yes, Lord. And, and, and I want somebody to just, you, you know, sometimes you looked at the price tag and say, oh, I can't handle that. I want you to I want you to write it down in the comments. Say, I can handle it. 
I want you to just decree it because God is looking at you. Can you handle it? Listen, I can handle it. I need about, I need everybody on here. Write it on the bottom. Tell your family, tell your sister, your brother, tell them I can handle it. Woo! Tell them I can handle it. This juice done got me into a prophetic realm. He, he, I, I'm telling you, if you can decree it out of your mouth, you see, you can't go nowhere and purchase something saying, oh, I don't know if I can handle that. I, I don't know if I can handle this. I don't know if I can handle No, you got to decree it out of your mouth. Because I've been sowing. Yes, I now I'm I'm in the middle of reaping some of the evil things I've done. But God is not just going to hold me accountable for what I've done, but he's also going to hold me accountable for what I am doing. So now it's going to level off. Woo! I'm telling you, you're, you're reaping and sowing. Thank you, Lord. I feel your Holy Ghost. It's going to level off. Some of us that have been going through so much hell, so much pain, that thing got to level off. Woo! That thing got to balance out. You can't have this much go through and then and, and that much reaping of good. And not, no, that thing got to balance out. And he's tipping the scale. Because some of us going to be on the, on the other side right now. Some of us going to be on the other side. We're going to be doing more good than we did bad. I ain't never going to get it all the way right. But my goal is to do more good than I do bad. To help more than I hurt. <laughs> to do more good than I do bad. To do more encouraging than I do discouraging. And that thing going to tilt. He's about to tilt the scale. And when God tilts this scale, you're going to begin to reap everything that you need in your life. I'm telling y'all right now, my father, and and I ain't gonna even show it to you, but my father did so much sewing. And I think my father, you know, they say everything is in God's time, and you know, I hear all that. But my flesh, I feel like my God, my father, I feel like my father died too soon. At the age of 61, I feel like he died. And my mom, 57, I feel like they died too soon. I feel like, you know, everybody else, you know, I, I, I had a conversation with my, with God. And, you know, people got their they fathers until they in their 70s, until they in their 80s, until they in their 90s. My mama died at 57. My, da my daddy died at 61. I feel like they were taken too soon. And, and I felt like that because I, I kind of feel like my father had so much more to reap because he's sown into so many. He's sown into so many with his songwriting and with his giving and in his, in his financing and in his preaching of the word. I felt like he had more to live, not just to do more, but to receive more so he can reap. But right now, my father and my mom, they went on to glory. But somebody got to reap the songs that Kanye West is doing. Somebody got to reap the songs that, uh, 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 that Mary Mary is doing. Somebody got to reap the songs that Byron Cage and Dorinda Clark are redoing. You see how that works? My father and mother are gone, but their reaping is not gone. Their reaping has been passed down to their seed. So I'm reaping right now for stuff that my father sowed. Good God Almighty, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand that the concept of reaping and sowing. That even though he's gone, we still reaping right now. Woo! And I'm telling you right now, listen to me. Listen to me real good. You have no idea some of the people your grandmama helped, some of the people your grandfather helped, some of the people mama helped and daddy helped. And, and some, sometimes you wonder why this stuff is even coming your way. <laughs> Listen, you 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 gonna reap some of the stuff that they didn't reap. They got taken out of here, but there's some stuff in the earth realm that they have not reaped. It got to go somewhere. Oh, but you just decreed it. You just declared it. I can handle it. I 
can handle it. I want to give you one more scripture. Yes, one more scripture. Daniel chapter 9 and 9. Daniel chapter 9, verse 9. And it reads like this. To the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgivenesses. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgivenesses. Though we have rebelled against him. Now, although we rebelled against him, he still gives us forgiveness and still gives us mercy. We still got to reap, but he gives us mercy and gives us forgiveness. So you ain't got to worry about not being forgiven for what you've done. Although you got to reap it, God says there's mercy for it. And I want to tell everybody right now, and I see Sister Marlo on here. Marlo, your, your mom helped so many people. And although she's not here, you're going to reap some of the good that she's done. Mr. James, he helped some, he probably helped some folks around the way, on the block. You're going to reap some of the good they done. Listen, we got some, you got some grandparents, some some great aunts that that opened their doors to folks. Listen here. They opened their doors to folks and let folks stay in their house. People ain't doing that no more. You know, back in the old days, if you didn't have nowhere to stay, you you go stay at somebody's mama's house or somebody. They ain't doing that today. But back when they did it, they didn't reap. They didn't reap like they should have reaped. But I'm telling you, that reaping is coming back around. That reaping is coming back around. I decree it and declare it tonight that we have a new, a new mindset when it comes to reaping and sowing. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And there is mercy... There is mercy for every negative thing I did. There's mercy for it. There's mercy for everything that I've done. There's grace for every negative thing that I had to reap. And, I, and I, I'm praying right now that my good outweigh the bad and that God tips the scale. See, now that I now that I got the concept, I know how to treat people. I know how to talk to people. I I, I know how to I know how to deal with people. Yes, Lord. I, I know I know how how to how to not get pulled into mess. I know how to not you see, you got to learn how to not get pulled into messy situations. You got to learn how to not get not not get pulled into mess, get pulled into foolishness. Because you at a time in your life, look, I, I done did so much. I got to tilt this scale. I'm going to pray for you right now. I need everybody that's on this line. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray right now for the strength to go through. God, I pray right now that you give us the strength to go through whatever we have to reap. You said, Lord, that your grace is sufficient your grace is sufficient. Therefore, we'll glory in it, God. We'll glory in our infirmities. God, we need you to tilt the scale. We ain't always done things right. We've done some things before we had the knowledge of Christ. But God, I pray right now that we start to tilt the scale. Help us to do more good than bad. And God, help us to sow bountifully so that we can reap bountifully. I decree and declare that houses are being built for your people now. 
that cars are being manufactured right now for your people that jobs and positions that ain't even available are being made available now for your people you said in your word God that no good thing would you but withhold from us but we need to know that although we're reaping we still got grace we still got grace God we thank you for your grace God help us just to hold on a little while longer make everything we went through worth it Woo. yes God I pray right now for you that everything you've been through was worth it. Everything that your family went through was worth it. Because you're getting ready to reap. You're getting ready to reap. You're getting ready to reap. Your status is changing. Oh, glory to God. Your status is changing. You got one job to do. You reap if you faint not. You reap if you faint not. Stay up. As long as you're living, it's time for you to reap. Yes, Lord. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Come on now, I want you to give God praise right where you at. Give him worship right where you at. Hallelujah. Come on, give him worship right where you are. Come on, worship him like you got it already. We in a reaping season. Yes, Lord. Woo! Come on, so for one more minute, come on, come on, give it to him. Come on. Come on. I know you in your house and, and we ain't in the church, but just begin to bask in his presence right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. Woo! Rain, Jesus, rain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Right in your house. Right in your house. He's tipping the scale. Woo. Hallelujah. Listen. Woo. God, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody feel him right now in your home. Somebody wanted to give up and throw in the towel. I'm going through too much. This is too much. This is too much. Listen, reaping and sowing got a season. It's, a, it's about to get to reaping season. You about to start reaping the good. You unreap the bad. It's time now to tilt the scale. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to tilt the scale. Ooh. Listen. I want you to sow a seed tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to sow a seed tonight. Some of us are going to sow a $50 seed. Some of us have our minds set to sow a $50 seed. Somebody going to sow more than that. I don't want to stunt you in your sowing. But I want you to sow bountifully tonight. However the Lord is leading you to sow. Some of us can sow that $20 seed. Some of us can do the best that we can do. I want you to do that right now. You can do that on Cash App. Yes, Lord. You can do that on Cash App. You can do that on Zelle. You can do that on our website. 
All of the information is on the bottom. Or you can mail your check in. Everyone doesn't have the electronical giving mechanisms, but you can mail your seed in to 1745 Pacific Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11213. 1745 Pacific Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11213. I want you to sow on this word. I struggled with this word tonight because of everything that has been taught to me on how people have taught the word of God to me but sometimes you got to learn the word of God for yourself and understand your go through anybody can anybody say I understand my go through now <laughs> I, I, I understand my go through now yes Lord come on I want you to sow that seed tonight Sow that seed tonight. Yes. Yes. God is tilting the scale, Sister Davis. Sister Robinson, God is tilting the scale. Mama P, he's tilting the scale. I understand my go through now. And all I got to do is ride this season out long as I start reaping the better the reaping of the better is coming it's got to come it's got to come hallelujah hallelujah thank God yes Lord I want you to receive this word tonight we get ready to go. Father God, we thank you for this word. We pray right now, those that are traveling, that you get them home safely with no hurt, harm, or danger coming to them. We pray right now, God, that you let this word resonate in our spirits all night. That we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. I got the victory. Well, you might as well clap your hands for a moment. Yes, Lord.